Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, everybody, for the last time in 2022. And this is the village that I have chosen to end the year with. There it is. Now this one might be small, but it's loaded with history. If you have been watching the York series, which I began a couple of weeks ago, you'll have watched the Nether Poppleton episode. And in that episode, I made a reference to a nunnery, a priory. And some people think it was located in Nether Poppleton. Others believe it was located here in the village of Everingham. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Everingham in the East Riding of Yorkshire is located five miles west of Market Wheaton and four miles south of Pocklington. Although its parish name is officially Everingham, its parish council make reference to the other settlement within its boundaries, Harswell, naming itself Everingham and Harswell Parish Council. There are two competing theories as to the origins of the name Everingham. Firstly, it could be derived from Ephah's ham, meaning the home of Ephah's people. Ephah is a Saxon word meaning wild boar and was commonly used in that era as a name, for example as the name of a warrior in the Saxon epic Beowulf. The second theory is that the village is named after the Saint Everilda, the daughter of the 7th century King Synglis of the West Saxons. There's no denying Everingham has a strong link to Saint Everilda. Everingham also has a huge hall, Everingham Hall, which was built for William Haggiston in the 1700s. Next to it is a Catholic church dedicated to Saint Mary and Saint Everilda. The hall would be owned in the 1800s by several people who would hold the title Lord or Lady Herries, including the Constable Maxwell families and the Duke and Duchess of Norfolk. A lot of this is off limits, but there's still plenty to see here. Let's go. We begin at the Village Hall, sited off Thorpler Street, the main road into Everingham from the hamlet of the same name. The Village Hall has a defibrillator on its wall, and to the right here, there's a play area. The play area features a multi-use games area, and there's some picnic tables and a recycling point here too. The Village Hall is the beating heart of the village, being the only community building Everingham has. Out onto the road and straight away we've got a mention of the Priory. The story goes that St Everilda fled her home to practice Christianity in seclusion and set up a convent somewhere near York, which became known as Everildsham or Everild's Home. Some believe that convent to have been here, whilst others place it at Nether Poppleton. Whatever the case, there's no trace of a convent in modern day Everingham. Old maps place the site of it somewhere here-ish. And of course, there are some references to St. Everilda all around this place. Here's one of them. This is St. Everilda's Terrace, which is just off the main road. 
but later on we'll come to St Everilda's Church which is that away and that's the sort of general direction we're heading. At the end of Thorpe the Street is a large building called the Coffee House. On the outside it looks like a normal house, but this is famed for a musical instrument, namely a 1904 medium-sized two-manual organ by Hardy of Stockport. It was rescued from John Bunyan Baptist Church in Oxford in 2013. The Coffee House holds regular organ recitals, played by Dr John Scott Whiteley. Admission is free and recitals last 45 minutes. Fascinating stuff and very unusual. I've linked a YouTube video below so you can see the organ and listen to the man himself playing it. The centre of Everingham, by the way, should be familiar to the regular viewer. This was the venue for a parish notice board episode back in November. Up here we find a bus stop. You can catch two buses here. These are the X36, which runs to York Railway Station, and the 195, which I have no information about. Now I know from doing Bealby a few weeks ago that uh, most of this road up here is residential, so there's uh, not really much point walking much further than sort of say here, I wouldn't have thought, because after that bend up there, that's the end of the houses pretty much, and it just turns into a country lane which runs towards Bealby. So we're going to turn around here and head back, and this way is a lot more interesting. Heading back the other way, we pass a red phone box. This one's empty at the moment, although Everingham and Harswell Parish Council's website does show an image of this still with a working phone. It must have been removed recently. These are garden cottages, or at least some of them. There's a collection of these which run behind the ones you see here, which face the road. Just by looking at them, you can tell Everingham is a conservation village, can't you? Next, we pass the War Memorial, which takes the form of a Latin cross, which sits in its own little enclosure. This lists everyone who served in both World Wars, 27 in total, of which 10 would not return, 7 in World War I and 3 in World War II. A couple more paces and we have the old post office next. No, the post box here is not a notable one, unfortunately. Everingham has no dedicated post office these days. The nearest one can be found in Home upon Spalding Moor. Okay, now we're approaching St. Everilda's Church, which has just appeared into my view and is now in your view. That's our next major landmark. The church is one of only two Anglican churches in England with a dedication to St. Everilda. The other one is in Nether Poppleton. However, in the 17th and 18th centuries, writers of that time note this as the church of St. Ameldis. This is a plain edifice in the Norman style consisting of nave and chancel of brick and a western tower of stone containing three bells. The nave and chancel were rebuilt in the latter part of the 17th century. In 1871, its roof was replaced. Its east window is a memorial to Sir Charles and Lady Dodsworth and also Reverend Philip Le Maistre and his wife Esther. Le Maistre was vicar of Trinidad and dean of San Francisco and he died in 1877. Over the road is the old rectory. It's no longer a rectory now, but it remains a Grade 2 listed building. It's a substantial detached Georgian family house with a sweeping gravel drive. It has large private gardens which run to an impressive one and three quarter acres. And St Everilda's is not the only religious building we're going to see in this episode because when we're done with Everingham in a few moments time, I need to drive to Harswell, and Harswell also has a church, but it's within like a farmyard, kind of a farmyard complex. Apparently, according to the owners, who I did email to ask if I could uh, have access to it, it's completely public access anyway, so it's not a problem. Uh, I'll be going down towards that uh, in a few moments' time. But next, we need to cover this. This is Everingham Park, Everingham Hall, St Mary and St Everilda. The Old Forge, Stable Cottage and North Lodge, which is that right there. Now, I'm not totally sure how far I can go into this, I'll be honest with you, but we will walk up this, this road and see what we find. This is the entrance to Everingham Hall, a track which runs over a small beck. And if you carry on walking, you come to not only the hall, but the private chapel of St Mary and St Everilda. Unfortunately though, you can't unless you have permission. As I suspected, this is private. 
but I don't give up that easily. On the way to Harswell, the road passes a set of entrance gates where you can get a look at the hall. Everingham Hall was built between 1757 and 1764 by John Carr. It was built for William Haggerston. It was sold in 1982 by Lady Herries, along with 2,868 acres, after a period of 800 years in the possession of the Constable and Constable Maxwell families. Adjacent is Everingham Park, a medieval deer park which retains features from three periods of landscape design in the 18th and 19th centuries. Thomas Knowlton from nearby Lonsborough was the chief landscaper in the 1730s and 40s. As for St Mary and St Everilda's Chapel, it's a Catholic church erected in 1839 by the late Lord Herries. It's in cruciform plan with an apsidal chancel at one end and an anti-chapel at the other. Its best feature is undoubtedly its high altar. The church also contains a font curiously carved with birds and animals supposed to be Saxon work belonging originally to the parish church of St Everilda. Yeah, that was fully expected. I, uh, I didn't know how far I'd be able to get into that, so I did plan to uh, make sure that if, if I couldn't act, get access to the hall or anything else down there, I could provide you with something, which I have done. Right, all I've got to do now is walk back to the car, hop in it and drive down here towards Harswell. Now it's quite a long way, believe it or not. Um, if you look at the map, the villages don't look too far apart, but like I said earlier, I know from doing Bilby a few weeks ago uh, how far apart these two places are. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll hop in the car and I'll see you in Harswell in a few moments time. Just before we go to Harswell, I must mention Ellica House Gardens. Ellica House sits just to the west of Everingham Park and was once the office belonging to the Everingham Estate and it was owned by the Duke of Norfolk. Open to the public for the princely sum of £6 per person, the garden is some five acres big and consists of parkland home to many mature trees including Corsican pines, Atlantic beech and many oaks. It has a formal lawn surrounded by colour themed herbaceous borders planted throughout the year. There's also a rose archway planted with old English roses which leads towards a lake which is surrounded by a woodland pathway. In addition to this there's a woodland walk which exhibits a carpet of bluebells and rhododendrons and a traditional thatched breeze hut positioned to allow optimum viewing of the lake and the surrounding garden. It's a beautiful part of the village. Okay, so here we are then in Harswell, and uh, it's not a very big place, Harswell, just a collection of houses really uh, on a narrow country lane, um, a bit like a bit like Everingham, just a bit smaller. Now it's also got um, the river Fullness, which is what this is here, there you go, and it's also got its own church, which is hiding behind these trees. And this church, like I said, is like within a farm complex. It's called Manor House Farm, and that's over here. And it's, uh, it's totally public access to the church, but obviously I'm not going to go anywhere around this area here because obviously that's um, all private. We'll walk up to the church, and that will finish off this episode. Harswell is a tiny settlement to the southwest of Everingham. It has a handful of houses and was once much larger, at one time boasting a population as high as 78. It was also the location of Everingham Railway Station on the Selby to Driffield line. Its church is dedicated to St Peter. It's set within a working farm on the southern bank of the shallow River Full Ness. The farm in question is Manor House Farm, which is a farmhouse and stable annex suitable for holidays, short breaks, family gatherings and events. There's been a church in Harswell from the late 12th century and the building that was present in 1823 was described in records as a small ancient structure. It was rebuilt in 1870 and 1871. Its parish records, which date back to 1653, are held by the Borthwick Institute in York. One notable feature of St Peter's is an elaborately carved gravestone set into its floor which some experts believe might mark the grave of St Everilda. So I've taken a pew, literally, to finish off the episode here in Everingham, inside the beautiful church here in Harswell. And one thing I haven't shown you, I don't know whether you'll be able to see, if I just tilt the camera upwards, you might be able to see then. Look at that ceiling. 
Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Nikki would love that. But of course, Nikki's not here. <laughs> I'm on my own today. So, uh, there you go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I've enjoyed every second of the parish of Everingham. And I hope you have too. And, uh, yeah, that's the last one in the East Riding series this year. It will, of course, continue next year, and it will be a mainstay throughout the entire year. Um, 2023, on Saturdays, you will have an East Riding of Yorkshire episode to view, unless there's um, some kind of disaster. But barring fire, flood, and uh, other kind of any other kind of damage, it will be um, an East Riding episode every Saturday next year in 2023 so all that leaves me to do now is to wish you all a very merry christmas and a happy new year here in the east riding of yorkshire and i'll see you uh, when uh, 23 is upon us i've been andy also known as the village idiot and this has been the parish of everingham and i'm out